Hello friends and welcome to another Bass video where we are building a Squarespace site from start to finish. And in this one, we are talking about Squarespace layouts. What does that mean, Caroline? So this is the point in the process that is very important because you're basically deciding what content you want to live on, on which pages. So like about page, home page, yep. work with us page, sexy page. <laughs> There's no sex page. Course page. Yeah, you're deciding all that stuff and you're deciding what order that stuff is gonna live on the page and you're deciding kind of the um, assembly of how that's gonna live. So a photo here, a text here, etc. But not necessarily going into what specific photo or what specific piece of text. It's just this goes here and then moving those things. Exactly. Around. So the reason why I do just layouts and I don't focus too much on what specific design embellishment's gonna be there or what choosing what specific photo is because I do not do well with decision fatigue. Mm. So if you're laying stuff out on the page and you're having to, to decide what content and where it lives, and then on top of that, you're trying to decide how you want it to look exactly and how you want it to be designed. It's too many choices, y'all. You're gonna get overwhelmed. Too many choices. So that's why I do one sweep of layouts of every page. So that includes adding the content, seeing the, the basic like idea of where I want it to live, et cetera. Um, so things that you are going to that are going to be important in this video are what content you want to live on each page. Things are not that are not going to be important, deciding on the exact design, deciding on the exact photos. And so you'll see that in action. Well, let's get into it. Our friend Page Architecture is going to take over from here. There's not actually There's a person not. named he just Page. Said that. I just we thought, thought it was funny. a funny name. Her name was Page. And then her last name is Architecture. What's so. your middle name? Blueprint. Basfa. Page Basfa Architecture. That's her name. Before I dive straight into Squarespace, I like to take a couple of minutes to sketch out a quick wireframe with what I think I want my layout to be and where I want all of that content for the page to live. When I do this, I'm thinking about a few things. I'm trying to place the more top priority content near the top of the page, and I'm also trying to keep the end website visitor in mind and what they might be looking for as they scroll. So you can see me creating my wireframe here on a worksheet within my GoodNotes app on the iPad. I'm thinking of the content that I want on the home page and deciding where and in what order I want it to live. I'm also considering my layout, like where I want images versus text and how those might be arranged. Once I have the rough layout on paper or iPad in this case, that's when I head over to Squarespace and I start adding sections to my index page according to how I laid them out in my wireframe. Wherever I want there to be a visual break in my content on the page, that's where I choose to create a new section in my index. I know I can always shift things around or move content from one section to the other in the future, but for this stage of the process, I just go with my intuition on how I want to group my content. Now, if you already checked out the previous video where I create my brand styles page, this is where you're going to see that step of the process really pay off. Because as I add content blocks based on my layout, they're already designed with my brand elements in mind. So my colors, my fonts, et cetera. Before I added that brand style step in my process, I used to actually add content blocks as I was laying out each page and I'd have to style each one individually, which really impacted my decision fatigue and slowed down the entire layout process. I was constantly adding a content block, then going to the site styles to edit it, and then back to adding content blocks. So that's why setting up those brand styles and customizing the default template up front is really, really helpful. It helps me fly through this layout stage of my process. One thing that I do like to think about as I design these longer index pages, like my homepage, is to add some visual interest with the background banner images. So you'll see if I have a section that's in a lighter color and I want to draw attention to my next section, maybe I'll make that background banner a contrasting color as I did here by adding this hunter green background banner to the about section right after my intro, which has a light background. Speaking of background banner images, at this layout stage of my website process, I am thinking about what I want these background banners to be, whether I want it to be a photo or a color or a cool design treatment like a pattern. I use this point in the process to kind of test run those ideas without finalizing them. So for example, take this section on the homepage where I knew I wanted it to be kind of two ways that we can help you. So this would point out to two calls to action, either to work with us and hire us for our services or to check out our course or another digital product. Again, that's going back to the idea that the person or business who uses this website might have services and products. Well, one of the ideas that I had was to maybe do a background banner that had some sort of split tone. So it would draw attention to these two different calls to action. You can see me kind of test running that concept 
However, as I previously mentioned about the whole decision fatigue factor, at this point in the process, I'm not really trying to get the perfect layout or the perfect way to execute on that idea. I'm just sort of putting a background image there as a placeholder and a note to my future self to explore that design treatment further. Solidifying the background banner images is actually one of the very last things that I do in finalizing the design. So that's when I will swap out all of these test banner images with my final design decisions, uploading high resolution JPEG versions of whatever my final design execution is going to be. So as we move on down the page and I consider the person or business using this final website, I want to offer an opportunity to put in some kind of lead magnet, like a free video series to watch or a free PDF to download. So I'm going to do that with a simple image block. This is where those different image block styles really do come in handy because I have quite a few options to choose from. So at this point, I just go with a style that I haven't used yet on my homepage for some variation in the layout and design as you scroll down. Now it's just a matter of adding those final couple of elements like a summary block of my latest blog posts as well as a block for Instagram photos. Of course, in the final website, the owner will be able to hook up their own Instagram using the Instagram block in Squarespace and it will feed in their own account photos. For now though, I'm just going to use an image gallery to kind of give it a similar look to that Instagram block. Next to the Instagram block, I also add in a place for a newsletter sign up. Again, the final website owner will be able to click into this and hook up their email provider, do all of that technical settings. But for now, I'm just going to leave the suggestion of including that block right here. This is also just a reminder that you'll see as I add some of the content blocks, if it wasn't something that we included when we created the brand styles page, then you'll see me have to go back into the Squarespace site styles and kind of adjust those settings. So that's what I'm doing here with the newsletter signup block. I want to change the background color of that block to be transparent, which you can do by sliding the opacity in the color picker all the way down to zero. And I also want to change the color of the submit button. All right, that about covers it for the homepage. So here is the final layout. We're far from finalizing the design and we haven't incorporated any custom design elements to the page, but in general, this is how I want the order of the content to live on the page. It feels cohesive and branded because of the work that we did in the brand styles page, and it gives me a solid place to start before I go back through and add the more intricate design elements. Now I go ahead and replicate this process for the rest of my website. To give you a peek into that process for my about page, Here's what I sketched out as my wireframe. I know I want a header to make it clear you're on the about page. I also want an image with more description text to tell a little bit more about the person or business behind the website. I think it'd be nice to use another image section for something like a brand mission. And then finally, I want a section to describe the brand's process and a couple of different steps in that process. Again, after I have my wireframe, it's really just a matter of playing around with the different content blocks and textiles that I've already set up to accomplish the goals that I set out in my sketch. There are just a few other little tips and hacks I do wanna point out on this about page. So I know I want an intro headline text at the top here, and I really like the style of the headline text in that poster image block. So in order to utilize this style, I actually just save an empty transparent rectangle as a PNG, and I upload that as my image block setting it to poster style. This allows me to edit my headline and utilize that headline style without having an image be visible behind it. Another tool that I find really helpful as I add my layouts is actually Squarespace's edit image tool. So for example, in this mission section here, I want an image block and I want to use my portrait style laptop image here. But once I put the text in, the block matches the height of the photo. And so it ends up looking a little bit long with too much extra space. So rather than just trying to write a bunch of filler text to fill up that space, instead I can click the edit image button within the image block and I can actually select the desired aspect ratio I want, which will crop my image without ever opening Photoshop. For the process section, I know my wireframe had four images straight across representing the four steps in this brand's process. So I decide to head over to XD to play around with some different ideas for design treatments on those images, adding some numbers just to make that process even more clear. And once again, these are just some ideas that I'm test running. When it comes time to finalize the design of the website, I'll make sure that I'm absolutely happy with whatever the final design of these graphics is. I'll also make sure that they're super high resolution and I'll make sure to save them as editable design files so that whoever owns the final website will be able to swap out these graphics with their own photos. All right, now that my about page layout is done, I pretty much just again replicate this process for the rest of my pages. I sketch out a quick wireframe, I section out the content, I insert the content blocks that I want, I put in some dummy text and images, and I play around with the layout until I feel satisfied with it, and then I move on. I won't make you watch me go through this process five more times, but 
there is one other content block that I want to walk you through and it has to do with this fun testimonial slider on the work with us page. This kind of a slider is a cool way to highlight some awesome quotes of people raving about your business or your product and you can use this same idea in a variety of different ways. To create this effect, you might remember from the setup video when I told you to create a separate blog on your site called testimonials. So within this blog, I simply create a new post for every testimonial I want to use. Within the blog post settings, I go to the option tab section and I paste the quote into the excerpt. I could even upload a headshot if I wanted to for the person attributed to the quote, but for this slider, I just want the text. So once I've added my quote, I head over to the content tab and in the title section, I type the name of the person who is saying this quote, or for now, I just type in some lorem ipsum filler text. I duplicate this post and I repeat my steps two more times. So I end up with three testimonial quotes in total for my slider. And that's when I head back over to my services page where I want this testimonial slider to live and I insert a summary content block. I select my testimonials blog as my content I set it to a carousel layout and I set it to display one excerpt at a time, only showing the title and the excerpt from the post. If you uploaded a headshot, you'd also want to display the featured image. And that is how you get this handy dandy little testimonial slider. All right, those are all of my fun little content and layout tips. Just to recap, here is where things stand after my layout phase of the process. I've set up my site, I have all my pages created, and now I have the content within those pages available to me and ready to be further customized. The next phase of the process is really just about going through each of these pages one by one and adding additional embellishments to make it feel really, really custom. So you'll see me play around with incorporating my brand's graphic elements, applying graphic treatments to my placeholder photos, and finalizing my background banner images. In the next video, you'll see me do all of that and more to wrap up the design of this Squarespace website.